people on great well lights. Let's rejoice again as we listen to the music of supercars ringing out around Mount Panorama Bathurst. And what a start by Lee Holdsworth and Fabian Cooper. Greg Murphy's in the mix. Lethal has bolted through turn up. Here we go in this slippery stuff on the exit. Do they all safely negotiate? I think they did. And Murphy still trying to gather it up. It was wheel spinning, but he gathered it up nicely. What a great start by Lee Holdsworth. And that's the difference between... Oh, Trouble. a massive spin. A massive spin on Mountain Straight. The track's blocked. Safety car to Pittex and Hold, Paul. Pittex and Hold. Car number nine in trouble here is Jack Perkins. Trying to focus on the mid pack. So there's a cluster of three wide down there. there. Wind Cup gets crossed up. Oh, there was actually nose to tail contact. Uh, that was actually the number eight with Dale Wood in it. I reckon he got into the back of the preceding car. But they would have been checking up on the water. So the reason that they start the concertina there is the minute the car breaks sideways, you're compelled to lift the throttle. Here's an on board. Whoa! That's smart. When Tyler Everingham gets a massive whack. Oh, is it? Tyler, is it? Well, no, in the oh, preceding sorry. car. Yeah. yeah. Look at the water and mud, and they're on the brakes, up Mountain Straight, lap one, cold tyres, wind cup rotating, Jack Perkins rotating. The lead car being Lee Holdsworth. We've gone green now, he has full control of the field. They can't pass until they get across the finish line. At the moment, I don't know that anyone's going to be too racy to try and go offline based on what happened on that one. We're racing once more. Track condition wise, oh, this is an arc. Oh, oh, bad rejoin, and another huge incident on the exit of the chase. And so, this is going to be a disaster. Zane Goddard has driven back out on the road with 30 tyres and clean bowl a heap of cars, including Winterbottom, including car number eight, Dale Wood, and one of the Penrod cars in this. It's an unbelievable scene. Down the inside, he's locked a wheel. Trying to get by Greg Murphy. Now he's straight on, he's into it. He's in the throttle and he's emerged back on, out of control. Nowhere for them to go. That is a massive shot. And seriously, you, ca you ca can't rejoin out of control. Yeah, that's dead set ordinary. Yeah. Here we go, let's have a look here. So he outbraked himself slightly and then wants to get back onto the track. Now, when you're there, you're out of control. So he had nowhere to go. Darwood had nowhere to go. Matt Campbell had nowhere to go. And does that end up as the only car involved? Here we go. Oh, Matt Campbell. Oh, my God. That is a massive shot. Had nowhere to go completely. Yeah, so this is the one. This is, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden I paused because I was about to say we're looking from Alex Davison's car and then he rolled out of the throttle so much so maybe Murph had a little moment and he had to back away for whatever reason. And even here, the opposite the commentary box, which is only about 400 metres from this shot, it's dry and the sun is out. out. At turn 23 at the final corner down there at Murray's, it's wet. And off the road now, Kostecki, that's the same spot. So he actually hit the fence on the right-hand side, but all that first incident unraveled. So 97 Ooh. only just squeaks out in front of 17. That's Tanda. Now watch this one. This is the one that we were talking about. So he launches, looks like he's got fresh air, and then they stop him and wait for car two to go by. And then I heard the curse on the radio in the background. So that's Warren Love. And uh, that's a gift from Jamie Wincup, an early Christmas present. Exactly. That would have been out by a mile. That's what I thought. He's got better exit, though. This means he's got a half chance here down in the braking area to turn one. And does he stick it up? Yep. Done. That moves him up now into position number three. Now, he could end up with a crisscross here because his exit wasn't great. You can see it. Have a go at this. Now, with a bit of side draft, they are equal. The problem for Fabian is the next corner turns right. And he's well aware of it. And he's vulnerable to the next car in the queue, which is the racy Brody Kostecki. Ah, oh, here we go. That's Alex Davison off the road. That looks like the chase also. He's trying to back that car. And he's trying to back it back out. 
He's just got it moving. Trying to take some steering off the car. And this will, this will stop him now. Does he get it there? Oh, my God. What happened to Alex Davis? So he's clamped a brake down there. He's still got his foot on the brake. Slide, slide, slide. Actually, he made pretty hefty contact with that outside wall. Uh, sort of half oil. No, he's having a secondary dive. And he's given him space, Brody, which is a bit unusual. There's some hip and shoulder in that one. And Mostert clears him. That was a bit of a rarity. You don't often see that in the latter part of Forest Elbow. Now some side drafts. And a go at Van Gisberg, and he's right under the rear wing of the preceding car, and he's snipped Mostert. Huh. I'm sure that I'd be flashing the lights yeah, to Brody, because if you had to go, pick on the regular 25, who's the hardest head driver out there in that gang? He'll happily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. It'd be yeah. Brody Kostecki, so... You know, I'm, I know there's a bit of gamesmanship in that as well, so what Chaz is hoping to do is just annoy him and unsettle him, get him to break concentration and maybe lose his cool a little bit, but he won't be an easy fella to unsettle. Got a car in the wall again. This time it's the cool drive entry. And Tim Blanchard's at the helm and it's at Forest Elbow. What happened on the replay to... Ah, oh, there was some help in this process. So Blanchard cops a whack from Control car two, number two. Car. Pit exit and hold. Pit exit and hold, please. And here we go. Recommence lap 44. Bit of the strategy that's going on here with Van Gisbergen is to try and unlace the damage of the five second penalty as well. So track position, we talk about it all year long, is key. Fresh air is key in lap speed performance. Again, regular driver, good car confidence, able to make an authoritative pass. Oh, oh, does he get up the inside there or not? He's, he's touched him. He's, in. he's turned him. Moffat's been turned. And he's got away with it. He did not hit the concrete. So that was Brody Kostecki up the inside of James Moffat, who flicks spins and lifts the front of the day. It's a miracle. 13 laps remaining. Fairly healthy battle going on here with Aaron Seaton. Oh, and someone's been off the road. That was Brock Feeney. So Brock Feeney's been off the road. We were just talking a second ago about his pace. It was going very well. In fact, he did a really good first sector. And then as we were watching Aaron Seaton the car again, and the Richard Stanaway, Battling with each other, there's Martin Short talking to Brock Feeney. So they've actually passed him. So Deep squally has got him. Oh, that was a huge save by Bryce because they all... So there's emotion bubbling up out there, as there has been all day. And Mostert starting to get sick and tired of being blocked. Fortunately, car number 96, the reason why I gasped in the background is it's triggered another safety car. It's Macaulay Jones that's buried a pit in. So apologies to Scott Pye, we had to cut short that interview. You can see in the background, and this is what I mentioned before, that managing coming in is as important as the racetrack at the moment. You can see the splash, there's gravel and mud and garbage down there. Oh, we've got trouble here for car number 51, pointing in the wrong direction, and then recovers from it. That's an unusual place to be looking like that, Greg Murphy. It is, isn't it? I wonder whether or not there was contact or whether or not he made a little error up there at turn two. He's up and running once more. Here comes the replay. Ah, so he was given a helping hand. Oh, nice job, Murph. So he just went off to the right-hand side. Now he's off the road at McFilmy Park. You've got to be careful when you rejoin here. So Tyler Everingham, we were on board. We actually almost picked it because Jamie Winkup was right in behind and the car up in front was Bryce Forward, so it's currently 12. Okay, keep pushing, mate. We've got to play and the that front we can see this flutter we can see is this going to be a serious problem for the Subway Commodore. Drop it, drop it. Oh, in the fence, Percat. So this will be a safety car, I would think. Now, wonder what's gone on there, because that looked like it just understeered straight off, but he's actually been able to drag it back. Oh, that's wow. lucky, but what caused it? And there's a lot of damage on the left-hand rear, so he's he's given the fence maybe a hit. It's sideways from the time he turns it. He then makes contact with the fence. Now, is that a bad down change, maybe? I reckon. Yeah. So it's sideways, it then goes bang against the fence on the left-hand side, and then all the wheels locked. The only bit that we saw was the wheels locked and the understeer in. It shows he was the quickest out there, and James was the fifth quickest car on that last lap. And up the inside Ooh. he goes, is that going to work? Oh. oh, that could have been the second time that James Moffat found himself pointing the wrong way at the cutting. Wow.
They both got away with it, but that was tight. 12 second margin now, Van Gisbergen over Brody Kostecki, but it was a very good stint by Garth, and there was a lot of wisdom in that opening stint of his, because he, you could tell he did want to have a bar of all the madness that was unfolding all around him, and that's the one of the key secrets to making sure that your car's somewhere where it is right now, which happens to be at the top of the tree. Just come back to the map, because this is starting to light up. Is he going to get it done? Isn't it amazing how much the cars move around when they're like this side by side? Unbelievable run down here. And he had, oh, what a cool move. He had him pinched and he pinched him nicely against the apex of the chase down there. So that was a very cool move. You just need a little bump there. Was that actual contact between the two cars there? There's certainly some brake instability getting down into the turning point there for Scott Pye. He only just went out because Tyler yeah. came in he making a hand over. So, yeah, so he did get a whack and it's actually got some damage. So that was him on the radio. And uh, he's got some smoke. In fact, I think he's rolled out of it a little bit because he'll be concerned about popping a tyre at high speed there. Oh, we've got trouble here with 35 in a wall. Is he going to be able to get out here at turn two or do we have another safety car? This is the change that we needed to make things liven up at the back end of this no, race. Hazelwood yeah. is in the wall. And here's what happened. Huge pace into the outside wall. Turn two, Todd Hazelwood, the truck assist entry, has clobbered those tyres. He did his level best to be able to get it out of the tyre barrier. And he is filthy angry with himself. So we've gone green. Shane Van Gisberg has got control. Brody Kostecki needs no incentive. Chas Mostert's got the fastest car out there at the moment. He's sitting in third position. Brock Feeney's in fourth position. Cam Waters, this is the break that he needed. He's been runner-up before. Can he snatch a great race this afternoon? He was trying to get down the outside and then flick across on the inside. Last-minute move there by Cam Waters, and it made him go wide. They've had a contact on the way up Mountain Straight coming out of Turn 1. Now, Brock Feeney's on the inside. Cam Waters on the outside. Let's see what happens in the braking area here, because it'll be super deep. They run into each other. He moves it over to clamp him down. Can he turn it in from the outside? There's no room in there. No way can you do that. Now, what happens in terms of straight line speed because Larco reported they took wing off that car, remember, earlier in the day to try to improve the straight line speed. He's right there at the turn-in point for the chase. Can he find out the inside? If he's ever going to do it, he's going to do it now. He's there, but they're going to be alongside each other. He's on the wrong side of the road, and Feeney goes off. He's through. Cam Waters through to fourth position. A little mistake by Feeney in the end. And drops two spots in the process. There's Van Gisberg, and just in behind a lap car. But over the rise, we'll just give you those little gaps. So there's Brody Kostecki. There's Chas Mostert. And a long way. Have a look at that for a gap. Yeah. So he's dropped right off. He might have viewed, like the car's sliding a lot. Quite had the pace. Oh, trouble for the Smith car. Yeah. And again, more trouble for Brad Jones right. racing up here. Right front corner, ripped out of that car. Does this change the nature of the race again? It's in the right front corner of that car. That's not going anywhere in a hurry. Got it on the go jacks. They may even need an extinguisher there. So that's not going to smell good. No, and that's the end of that, I would think. Just pluck that right hand front corner out of it. So that'll be day done for the SCD here. Oh, yeah, oh, my God, look, I didn't think it was going to light up like that. Good prediction by you. Yeah, I can see it there. It's actually right under my feet here. Yeah, so that, <laughs> now they don't want powder all over it because that just creates another job, but they wouldn't have seen how much flame was involved mm. in it. So one of the brake ducts or a bit of an inner guard or something. Here's the reason why. So back up to the top of the hill on the replay, wanders wide and thuds into that wall. He's got left steering lock on. It's not responding to the helm at all. And he slams into the wall between Reed Park and McPhillamy and does not trigger a safety car and they get it back into the lane. So 5.2 seconds margin between Van Gisberg and Kostecki. Oh, there runs. Definitely sorry, Chad, we've got to stop you there, mate, because we've got Will Davison in the fence at turn two. So is he going to be able to get out or is this the eighth safety car? Sorry, Chad. Will Davison parked up in the wall at turn two. So this is Will Davison. This is the first part of the puzzle. He arrives and it's got all rear brake. That is all rear brake then. 
to get an answer to that question for you. Were there any tweaks to 99? We know that it's been a front ride height change to car number six. So Cam Waters' car should be better in the front end, more responsive. Van Gisbergen out, done for the rest of the day. Here's the rejoin. This is a rejoin. Key rejoin to the safety car line. Is there any? I can't see it. It's got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. So yeah. lost it. Got him. Uh, so I reckon Brody I you thought that the recovery vehicle chance. blocked him then. Well, no, it shouldn't be there. I'm totally with you. I'm, so this is on board now with Brody. Oh, he had to pork it up. He, yeah. he absolutely yeah. had to come out of it. And we're boxing on for the back end of the Repco Bathurst 1000 once more. And a very, very nice restart by Van Gisbergen. He got to the left-hander at the chase. He turned it in and gassed it up. Dead set, hand-to-hand -hand battle. Here comes Waters. Great run by Cam Waters. Straight down the inside. Great authority, impromptu move. Bang, got it done. Does he have a lunge? Gets closer and closer and closer. Bombs down the inside, but has to pull back out of it. Cam Waters has finished three times in a row, second. He will not want to finish second again. Extraordinary stuff. Can you believe that pace between the two of them? And on that lap, there's eight one-hundredths of a second between Van Gisbergen and Mostert. They are trading punches. These guys are... Oh, oh massive slide. Mostert, he almost gave it away. When you spin to the infield of the grass, if you make that grass, you are in the fence hard. And he gathered it up. He's got extraordinary car control. And it's not done yet. They are completely Ooh, in the zone. The there was wheel. some brake locking. He lost a little bit of ground there, so he was right at the grip edge limit. And that immediately pulled four tenths of a second out of the Van Gisbergen lead. It's down now to 0.6 of a second. It illustrates what I was talking about, that they are maxed out. There's nothing left. They're right on the edge of making mistakes. And if either one blinks, the other will pound. Equaling what Scott McLaughlin achieved. There's a record in a season. He's not, made another mistake there. This is the weak spot for him at Forest Elbow. It's that point that Mark made about that wide turn in line there. And he's getting a lot of inside front locking, so he's lost margin again. Out the other side of the dipper now for the final time. There are Marshall is applauding. But does he pull it up well here at Forest Elbow? He's got to be ultra conservative. He's made mistakes there in the recent past. He gets through there cleanly. The margin is just 0.9 of a second. Down Conrod straight now for the last time. Fourth gear, fifth gear, and sixth gear. There was a question mark over the gearbox in this car earlier in the day. No such problem right now. Into the braking area for the last time. And the thing just looked a tiny bit unstable when he first grabbed the brake. The margin is exactly one second through that muddy section of the racetrack for the very final time. And what a day. He's overcome a penalty. Competitor crashes, weather, rain and mud. It's farewell, Holden. and hello, Shane Van Gisbergen, the winner of the Repco Bathurst 1000. <laughs> what a superb performance by Shane Van Gisbergen and Garth Tander for the final time for Holden. Jamie Winkup rejoicing. Garth Tander and the rest of the team absolutely so enthusiastic the celebrations for van gisbergen what a day for holden fans 73rd career career victory for shane van gisbergen 57th for garth tander that's 100 career podiums for tander and the second bathurst 1000 victory for shane van gisbergen red bull have done it again so here is the unofficial result up on screen for you at the moment. Van Gisbergen and Tander, they do it again. Mostert waters in positions number two and three. Just outside the top ten, that was a ripping drive today from Stanaway and Murphy Golding and O'Keefe just outside there as well. Nice comeback also for Macaulay Jones and Jordan Boys. They were a long way down the order. And there's a whole bunch of tales to tell about those that weren't classified. Some sad moments there and some awfully damaged cars early in the day.